Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about Titan 3 and what's new in it, because we released it. We actually re did release it, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so we re I pushed it out last Monday, um, and it seems to be a pretty good release. So there were only a couple of bug reports so far. Um, usually when you put out a new release, especially a new major release, uh, you pretty quickly get a lot of bug reports for it. Um, but as you can see here in the timeline, we had lots of time to prepare this release. We started in 2018, so that's almost five years ago. Um, that was the first uh, Cytan 3.0 commit. Um, and to give you an idea, that was the time when Python 2.7 and actually 3.4 were still alive, and um, Python 3.7.1 was just released, right? So that is ages ago. Um, even our first alpha was only in 2020, and we had already had more than 1,000 commits. That's uh, hundreds of pull requests up to then. Um, and back in the, final, uh, in the final release, finally, then we had more than, well, almost 3,500 commits in it. Uh, changes from the 029 release, which we had before, um, and that's uh, 639 PRs merged. Uh, for the 3.0 release, so that's really a big release, and it's a big relief to have it out. Um, so uh, does everyone know, who does not know Cython? Who's never used it? Okay, still a couple of people. Um, so to give you an idea, uh, what is Cython at all? So it, it's uh, a Python compiler, okay? So it translates Python to C, um, and allows you to write C code without actually having to write all this nasty, ugly C code, right? Um, and I actually can't stress that enough because we have a lot of users uh, in large projects um, that say, uh, at the beginning we were, we were kind of torn, we, we, did, we were thinking about uh, you actually going for C because you know, C is language, C is a thing. Um, we didn't know if we should uh, rely on Cython as a language at the time. Um, and now they say that was such a good idea to do that because like, the, the people who contribute to our projects, they don't have to learn C, right? Because most people who, who use these tools who, who want to contribute to the projects, they know Python, they don't know C, right? Often not at all, um, especially not C++. I mean, most people these days, either you learn C++ or you probably have never heard of it. Um, and so it allows normal people to contribute Python code to your project. Uh, even though your project is, uh, depends on C, needs to run at C speed, needs to talk to external C libraries that um, you need to, to uh, link to Python. Um, and it really keeps this low click to see the code level, right? So you click on, on, on the file and you see Python code. Rather than, you know, it's, it's it's implemented in, in, in Cython. It uses Python syntax, um, although it eventually runs in C in a native code. Um, to get proper tracebacks, you get this show me the code kind of feeling uh, while having the same code, you know, run in C and be fast. Um, it does support C in C++ data types as type annotations. Um, that allows you to, allows the compiler to turn your Python code into actual C code, into fast C code. Um, and since all of this is, is going into C in the end, um, you can easily interface with C and C++ libraries uh, uh, by talking to their APIs, by just saying, um, whether I'm calling Python function here or C function doesn't really make a syntax difference. Um, it's a totally different thing in the end because you know, one is fast, one goes to Python call overhead. Um, but in your code, it looks the same. It's just you know, use one or the other um, interchangeably. And so it interfaces with Python data ecosystem, uh, which allows you to process large data sets from NumPy and friends. You directly get the data, unpack it into a memory buffer, and you can uh, do the computations directly in, in native data types in C speed, um, even though it's, it's a Python object that you like a NumPy object, um, a NumPy array that provides this data that you use for passing this data around. So what's special about uh, Cython 3? Well, it's more Python, right? It's much more Python than ever before in Cython. Um, used to, so Cython used to be a bit of a separate language, and now it's really Python um, with C data types. It uses type annotations, 
Uh, we support many more Python language features in the uh, Cython 3 version, and you get really high-level features like a fast data class, um, a decorator or total ordering, and standard library features, but we've implemented them in C, so you get them uh, for extension types for C-implemented uh, Python classes. And there's a ufunc decorator, which is also a new thing now. Um, does everyone, does anyone, who, who knows what a ufunc is? You know, not by ufunc. Or just a few people. So there's a, a fast way for um, operating on, on NumPy arrays for doing um, element-wise operations. So you can implement a function, basically, that operates uh, element-wise on the array. Um, and NumPy tries to apply it to the array as fast as possible. Now, with the ufunc decorator in Cython, you can also do that in, at C speed. Um, yeah, it's faster than ever. So we have more code op optimizations for your Python code, and we generate generally better C and C++ code, um, make use of new features, uh, especially in C++, to um, make the code faster and more uh, standards compliant. And we support more target environments, um, which support nine versions of CPython in Cython 3.0. So that is from, uh, so if, if the stand needs support uh, Python 2, we help you with it. We support Python 2.7, uh, and then all the way up from uh, 3.5 up to 3.12, which I think isn't even, so it's, it's going to be released, what, next week or something, right? It's, it's in the makings. Um, okay, and we support, um, well, mostly they're uh, still all a bit experimental, but Piper support is pretty good these days. Uh, there's experimental support for GraalVM, so for Graal Python, uh, for the limited API, limited C API in C Python, and also for Nogil C Python, so for the Nogil fork of C Python. Well, um, since this is a major release, what did we break? Um, well, we broke the world. Um, many packages did not specify that they wanted to stick to a, a zero point something version of Cython. So last Monday, um, the SCI broke because um, just saying that you need a newer Cython version than 029 whatever um, does not prevent you from getting Cython 3 right at the moment, and it's not entirely compatible. It's a new major release. We fixed some things that we considered not well done in the past, and that may hit your code. So anyone who did not say, specifically say that they wanted a, um, a Cython version before 3, so open something, um, probably got their uh, CI broken at, at, at that point. And notice that there was a Cython 3 release, so that was very good um, adv advertising for us. Uh, lots of people noticed it that way. Um, okay, uh, what did we break? Well, there's one major thing. Um, maybe some of you still remember what was the, the main problem in uh, the Python 2 to Python 3 transition. What broke everyone's code there? A couple of things, CAPI, yeah, a couple of things in CAPI, but that wasn't that bad. Unicode, right? The Unicode change. So um, switching from something that was mixed type uh, between bytes and Unicode, um, and you got whatever you wanted, to a strict separation between bytes and Unicode. That break broke, actually broke most people's code at the time. It seems a simple and a very obvious change, a right thing to do, but like, it broke lots of packages. So we have our Unicode moment here. It's called no accept. Um, so the change we had was that C functions now propagate Python exceptions by default. So previously, you often ran into the case that you had some, some function that needed to be fast, you implemented a C function for it, and um, it raised ex Python exceptions internally because, you know, this Python allows you to mix uh, Python and C freely. Um, so it raised the Python exception, and then there was no way to tell your caller that there was an exception, and it just got swallowed and, and you know, printed somewhere, but no one noticed. Very bad behavior. You should always propagate exceptions and tell your caller that there was a problem, right? So we changed that, and now C functions propagate exceptions by default, so we hear about exceptions uh, being raised somewhere down, deep down in C function code. And uh, that means that the function signature changes because previously there were no exceptions, now there are exceptions, that's incompatible. And people notice that when they're working with external C libraries because there are now uh, mismatches between the signatures. 
Sorry for that. Um, it's easy to fix. You add a no except marker at the usually function pointers. Um, and, uh, well, the, but depending on how many function pointers you use, can be some work. Okay, um, how important is Cython? Well, who uses it? Um, just a couple of projects that use it. There are tons of projects actually that use it. Um, there's now a, there has been a, a, a Cython language marker in PyPI for a while. Uh, many projects already use that. And so there are hundreds of projects that are marked as using Cython one way or another. You probably know some of these, right? Um, um, even worse, like you can go to the numfocus stand outside and you take, you pick any of the stickers and it's most likely a project that has some kind of Cython implementation in it. So we are basically the, the backbone of the Python data ecosystem, or one of those, right? NumPy is certainly an important thing in there, but um, given how important Cython is as language in the area, we're somewhere close to NumPy. Um, but uh, numeric computation is not all you can do in Cython. There was some guy at, at the PyCon US uh, back in 2017 already, so that was a while back. Um, he, was, he was working at Instagram, and he gave a talk there um, where he went, okay, this is one thing we tried. He, he was actually presenting Cython in his talk. And uh, so Instagram, as some of you may know, is, is a big uh, user of Django. And um, so they uh, heavily rely, rely on, the, on good performance of Django, right? And so one thing he did was um, he took the, the URL routing module in Django, which basically receives the URL, the request URL, and dispatches it to the code that responds to the URL request, right? Uh, he took that module, uh, just compiled it in, in Cython, did nothing else, right? He just ran Cython over it, compiled it, and uh, it ran three times faster. That's pretty good if you depend on the performance of Django, right? And he said, like, okay, um, we still don't know what Cython is, we have no idea up to this point. We just ran it, and our code was faster. That's OK for doing almost nothing, right? Um, I, I checked um, before I gave this talk, and Django still does not have binary packages. So if any of you is working on the Django project, um, ask them if it's not worth providing binary packages that compile a couple of modules. It might really be worth it. OK, um, here's demo. Um, where's my demo? Oh, it's probably next door. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I've, some of you may have seen something like this before. Uh, I keep giving this talk uh, for a couple of years already. I've adapted an Alpha Cyton 3, so there is something new in it. Um, I'm going to introduce Cyton, going to tell you a bit how, um, how the, the language looks and behaves. And then I'll show you examples, um, how you can, or one example, I'm going to follow one example where I'm going to show you uh, how to you know, speed it up and bring, really bring it, um, bring some kind of computation to C speed um, without leaving Python land, with keeping Python syntax all the way. This is a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks have support for Cython. You can just say load x Cython. Well, you obviously need Cython installed. Okay, so people install Cython, but then you can use uh, load x Cython. Um, and uh, that means that from that on point on, you can use a cell magic called percent percent Cython to write uh, cells in Cython to have them compiled for you and run, have them run in native code. Okay. Um, here's my environment. I'm using Cython 3.0 final, okay, Python 3.10, NumPy 1.25, GCC 11. Uh, yeah, and I should note, uh, mention that, um, well, once you start using Cython, um, you need a C compiler, okay? So that's the difference from Python. Python, you just run Python in code, and it you know, does everything for you. Um, when you use compilation, um, there are two steps involved, so once uh, you run Cython over your module, it generates a C file. You need a C compiler, which then generates an extension module for you. And that's a module that you can normally uh, import, so that's like any other binary module uh, that you have in, in Python. 
Uh, it's generated by Cython, but that doesn't matter. It's just a, you know, an arbitrary uh, Python binary module. But there's a, a compilation step involved now. Okay, little example. Um, so I'm using the uh, math module in Python, use the sine function in there, and it just calculates sine of five. Fine, um, works nicely. And I can do the same thing in Cython by just adding the Cython cell magic, right? Okay, takes a bit longer. As I said, uh, there's a compilation step involved. Um, and apparently it takes quite a bit longer for me. Maybe it's because the f it's the first time I'm running this. Um, interesting. Okay, it doesn't print anything with just, you know, presentation effect. Um, let's try something else. Let's go for something completely different. Um, uh, actually, what I want in Cython is not uh, to use the sign function, the Python sign function from the math module, because, you know, that's Python. I have to call through Python function when all I really want is to do a, a you know, fast math calculation. So instead, I can use the libc sign function from the math header, and I do that by importing uh, the, the math header, so the, the math functions from libc. So in Cython 3, I can just say from Cython C imports, and then I say libc uh, import math. So that gives me access to all the math functions. And then I take the sign function, assign it to variable, and I can call it from Python. Nice, huh? Uh, what does that work? Well, um, what Cython does in the back is it sees that the sign function is actually pretty easily wrappable um, because it just you know, it gets a C double in uh, returns a C double, right? So it's totally compatible to a Python function that um, eats a float and returns a float. Um, and so it auto wraps it for you. I assign it to a Python variable, and that just says C function, Python variable, needs wrapping, Cython goes, okay, I'll wrap it for you. Okay, and then I get a Python callable function, and I can just call it uh, from my Jupyter notebook. Um, so basically, what this does is it uh, implements uh, a Python function in the back, which takes a C double, uh, internally calls the math sign function, and returns the result. So this is the same thing spelled out. Okay, same thing here. You can call that. Um, apparently, gives the same result. So I'm lucky. Um, one little feature. Uh, that's Cython dash a. So it gives me. An, uh, so that means annotate, right? Annotate my code for me. Um, and that's a nice way for figuring out what's going on in the generated C code. Um, it's, so additionally to um, compiling my code and providing the functionality in it, it um, uh, also returns uh, an HTML display of my module, which then tells me uh, how much Python interaction that's going on. So um, the yellow lines tell me that there's kind of some kind of Python API interaction going on, right? So we're talking to the Python C API here. Um, and uh, when I then click on this line, for example, you can see that it's calling Python C API functions, but it's also the calling the uh, plain C sign function in there, here, right? So the sign call um, is really literally a C function call, and then afterwards, in order to return the results, uh, back to Python and needs to convert it to Python float object. Okay. Right. Um, and so the the thing where so I mean th this is pretty boring, right? So there is a, a math module that's a sign function, Python sign function in there. So why not co just call that? Well, because it becomes more interesting as soon as you can push more work into the Cython layer, right? So here I'm calculating sine of x squared. Um, and the calculation that I can do is I can do the squaring and the sign calculation at the, at the C layer rather than doing the squaring in Python, creating Python objects, and then calling a Python function to, call, to um, do the sign calculation and returning yet another Python object. So I'm avoiding Python object creation here. Right? I'm doing kind of unboxed calculations, if that's something that means something to you. Um, and the more work I can push into the Cython layer, so in the layer between Python and C, um, the, the faster the whole thing gets, right? Because this is translated into C. 
And you can see here that the squaring really is like x times x and c. OK. Um, so one cool thing um, that we added in Cython 3 is that these functions, these C implemented functions, are really compatible with Python functions. So you can use inspect, for example, to see what the signature of this uh, Python function is. OK? <laughs> and I'm going to use them. <laughs> um, OK, here's a longer example. Um, so as everyone likes taxes, right? Who does not like paying taxes? No one, right? Almost no one, OK. Um, so this is an example I'm already carrying around with me for a while. Uh, as you can see, the numbers are from 2016. It's been a while, OK. Um, so uh, in, in Germany, there are about 45, 4 million people who have a, well, paid regular income. And, uh, and the average income in Germany is like 44,000 uh, euros, or was at the time probably not very much different now. And so I wanted to calculate the average tax rate in, in Germany, right? Uh, should be possible if you have the data. Sadly, there's no official data. You don't get exact uh, numbers, probably because otherwise it would be too easy to, to uh, mark people as that's probably someone who owns, who, you know, who uh, earns that much. Um, so, uh, well, lacking official data, I just created some alternative facts here. And um, I took um, a log normal distribution because that's probably more or less what you would expect from an income distribution. Um, fit it so that the average is somewhere near the official average. And um, then I just you know, plotted it using matplotlib to, uh, to make sure I'm, you know, it looks kind of realistic. Um, Maybe I should restart my kernel. Okay. Okay, and then, um, right, there we go. Right? So it's, it's not completely off, right? It's more or less what you would expect from the income distribution. Then I looked up how to calculate the income tax in Germany, and what Wikipedia gave me for it was literally, it was an Excel formula, right? I was like, oh, what Excel? No. Um, but the cool thing is it's, it's easy to translate into Python, right? So you can literally just uh, take the condition and the calculation, and then you can write it down in Python code. Okay, so this is how you calculate the, calculated the uh, tax for a given income uh, in 2016. So it's some kind of uh, consecutive uh, formula that you know, cuts uh, at, some, at some points and whatever. OK. Um, so in order to calculate the average income, you sum it up, sum up all the incomes, and uh, uh, divide by the number of incomes. And then the average tax rate is just uh, the sum of the um, taxes by the sum of the incomes. OK? So. Um, Lots of numbers, uh, and then uh, the average tax rate apparently is 24%. Okay. Now, in order to make the following um, comparable, I'm doing timings for this, and the first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to run the whole thing in Python. It's going to take a few seconds, and then I have a function to make all of this comparable. Um, to and that's going to calculate the ratios for me, right? So speed up of, you know. N times. So that's 1.6 seconds. OK. So um, this Excel formula is also easy to express in NumPy using slicing. OK, so we can slice, take a slice of the array, uh, apply the formula to it, and then do that for all four segments, uh, sum of the results, and you know, get the final formula. Gives you more or less the same 24%. And when you run this uh, in NumPy, uh, it should be a bit faster. I'll actually, uh, um, uh, 
make sure we're up to speed here. Um, oh, looks like it didn't run this. Okay. Run again. Okay, so 126 milliseconds and 13 times faster than Python. Okay, pretty decent. I mean, it's, it's like, it's a whole lot of, of, of formula, right? Um, but it's also, um, it's, it's kind of like, if you know, know NumPy, it's probably readable, right? Kind of. Okay, so that's 30 times, 13 times faster than NumPy. NumPy has a different way to do this. That's a new func. Um, I already mentioned that before. So you can just apply this function uh, um, item-wise to the array. Let NumPy do this for you. And when you run this, uh, also takes a bit of time, and then eventually it's going to take, well, 900 milliseconds. So that's a lot slower than the plain NumPy version, right? Because we're executing Python code here, right? So we're executing Python code for each of the items. OK, and the size then. Um, now, all I'm doing here is I'm taking the plain copy of the Python code above. Right? So this is unchanged Python code. Um, I can literally copy it over. And I'm just going to run it in a Cython cell and see what that gives me. Same results, 24%. Okay. And um, then the ratio is, well, it's 1.3 seconds. So it is visibly faster. It's about 30% faster than the Python version, but it's way slower than the NumPy version even slower than the UFUNC version, right? Kind of sad, but yeah, that's how it is, okay. Um, there, we'll see how to make this faster in a second. You can also use the Cython function as UFUNC, doing the same from PyFunk uh, call in NumPy, and then we can use the Cython compiled function um, as UFUNC. And you can see that that's 560 milliseconds, uh, which is visibly faster than the plain compiled version, so 2.3 times faster than the plain compiled version. It's 60% faster than the UFUNC version, right? Than the Python UFUNC version. So there's a visible difference, but it's still slower than NumPy. Okay, so how do we make the Cython version faster? Well, static typing. So I'm going to change the signature of the calculate text sci function. I'm going to turn it into a function that can be called directly from C, so without the Python call overhead. So I'm adding a decorator C call, which allows Cython to do C calls inside of the module. And I'm changing the signature by saying, well, my income value is actually C double. My return value is also C double. So please do the calculations in C double as far as you can, right, rather than a Python float object. Okay, and then down here, for the calculation, I'm getting rid of the sum function, and I'm spelling out, um, I'm gonna use that later again, that's why I'm already spelling it out here. I'm spelling out the, um, the, the calls, and the calculation, the adding, uh, basically the, the reduction of the values um, in, in a more straightforward, okay, uh, way here. And uh, now when I run this, I'm going to compile it and run it then. And um, then you can see it goes down to uh, some 40 milliseconds, apparently. So let's see. Um, what's that? Oh, sorry, here. 40 milliseconds. And that is already the fastest version. So it's three times faster than NumPy. Right, just by adding static types. And it didn't add much, right? It just, you know, changed the signature here a little. The rest is the same. Okay, let's do some more. I can use uh, this, the type sizing function as a NumPy ufunc. And um, that go, gets it to uh, 280 milliseconds, so that is faster, but not as fast as before. And I can Cython, let Cython generate a ufunc for me um, using the ufunc, new ufunc decorator that we added to Cython 3. And that way um, I can directly call or use it as a ufunc in NumPy 
just the, um, you know, as before, uh, double to double, uh, and add on the new func decorator, and then I can call the function on the array, take the sum of the array, and divide it by the sum, and uh, that, okay. And, um, yep. and that gets a little bit faster, so 10 milliseconds, 1.4, uh, so yeah, 1.4, so 40% 40 faster, um, so, sorry, um, three times faster than the type version. Okay, and we can continue. Um, I'm just gonna jump all the way down here. Um, you can do uh, parallel looping, so you can, instead of the range loop, you can use a P range loop, which is a parallel open and P loop, and uh, that gets it down to four milliseconds, and we're now 360 times faster than Python. Okay, there we go.